That's right. DJ Key and Ada represent. Hi, on MPI. This week, the NPI is from Nordic. That's right. We back, ha- we hang out with them back when we could hang out with people. They used to visit Ada for all the time. Yes, I don't have a Nordic yeah. shirt, but I do have a particle shirt, and they they're a big uh, Nordic customer too. So I thought it's yeah. the same kind of blue. Um, so Nordic actually sent us one of their new Power Profiler kit twos. Um, we got it like a couple days ago, and uh, we thought this would make an excellent NPI because I'm personally excited. I love when tools that companies design for like their own use get released as products because. Yeah. They have designed something that's they know. We do that too. They know what yeah. they need. They're like, this is useful for us. That's useful. Probably gonna be useful for you. It's gonna be useful for you, and they did it at an excellent price. So okay. usually, um, a good power monitor can cost like five hundred dollars or up, and and they're worth it. They're good, but for a lot of people, they don't need the five hundred dollar plus power monitor. They really just need something basic that can like differentiate um, current levels. It doesn't need like all the fancy software knobs and and high power and like 12 volt, 16 volts. They just need something that's like around three volt output, uh, around an amp maximum, and um, the software that lets you plot the data to know whether your hardware is in low power or not. Because when you're dealing with wireless chipsets like Nordic makes, right, Bluetooth and um, cellular, and soon Wi-Fi, they just announced they're gonna be doing Wi-Fi as well. Um, you know, you connect and then you disconnect and you go to low power and you go out in low power and you, you can't use a multimeter. A multimeter won't, won't give you the precision, it won't give you the accuracy, it won't give you that dynamic range you need to see really what's going on. Also, you need to integrate over your current usage to know how long the battery's going to last. Um, there, there can be some pretty intense math uh, to really model how long your battery will run. And if you have something that runs on a coin cell for like a year, you don't want to wait a year to find out like whether it ran, you'd rather do the mathematical calculations and then give yourself some buffer and extrapolate how long the battery will last. Um, that's way smarter than waiting a year. Trust me, I know we're like testing low power and I'm actually like looking at the fridge, uh, the bag tag once a day to see if it ran. It's like, I'll know in a month if the battery ran out, but it would be cool if I didn't have to. Um, so the new Power Profiler Kit 2 uh, is out and this is a standalone power profiler. So you don't, it's, the previous one was like built into a dev kit, um, which makes sense because you have dev kits, you want to make sure that the, you know, the power of it um, is as low as, as it can be. But for a lot of people, they have a standalone design. Now there's a standalone power profiler and it's like really beautifully designed and it's straight to the point, right? All it does is plugs it over USB. It has um, a power switch. It has like a power input output you can see on the PCB, the documentation. It has some GPIO and it I think it's even driven by an NRF52 840, although I noticed that the antenna was not populated. Although I don't know, you know, you could always go in and reprogram it if you want. And it has um, all the analog section you need. Um, here's just it from the top. Um, so uh, you can see the antenna section to the right. There's no, it's not Bluetooth actually. It's, it does it over USB data. It shows up as a serial port. Um, and then you use their software to connect to it. Uh, and you can see on the left, there's a little documentation of the power. You can either have it source the power. It's like a, like a power supply and it can supply 0.8 to 5 volts um, up to an amp. Or you can use it as like a pass through ammeter where you know, you cut a trace, say, in your design, and then you are um, measuring the current going through a point of your circuit. Um, that way you're not like, you know, you can use an existing battery or, you know, or your existing power supply if you want to uh, have more accurate modeling. Um, so this is, you know, they have one demo showing. Here's how you do it in ammeter mode. This is the, the pass-through mode. So you connect the PPK to, to your computer. You run the app on the computer, and then it monitors the current on your separate dev board um and this is the pass-through mode but there's also again the sourcing mode which is what i'll use i'll I'll show that on the overhead in a little bit um so to install it you have to download nrf connect it's free i I, i'm logged into the nordic website but you probably should log in and then inside nrf connect you install the power profiler app it's all beautiful and has a lot of blue hope you like the color blue uh when it comes up um you have a little uh, you know log area on the bottom right Mid top right is the uh, graph, um, and then there's some uh, numbers in the middle that kind of tell you like the the current. Um, if you can 
make this a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So you want to see it? Yeah, because I can read it. Okay, so we can have the average current, the max current, um, the time, and what I really like is the microcoulomb charge. So again, you can use that because it's not that you need the milliamps or the microamps at a certain point in time. You want the total amount of charge coming out of your battery so then you can calculate how long your design will last. Um, again, not easy to do when your uh, graph is a complex shape. Um, selected, it shows up as a COM port. And then, um, you know, this is me. I hooked it up to a mag tag and I had it source 3.7 volts um, to my device. And you can see it, you know, turning on and it, there's like a spike of current. Um, and then you can see it kind of boots up, it connects to Wi Fi, gets some data, it does some things, and then eventually um, it shuts down at the bottom. So, what's nice about this is the very wide dynamic range. It goes from um, like one microamp to about an amp, which is excellent because like that's kind of the range of most wireless devices. Again, you need five amp, 10 amp range. This isn't the device for you, get something else. But between about one microamp and one amp is plenty for like 99% of projects. You can also export the data um, to a massive CSV if you would like. Uh, so you can do like further analysis if you want to import it into your MATLAB or um, R or some other analysis software so you can do um, more data plotting. And then, you know, I put the mag tag into deep sleep mode um, and, you know, checked it out. And yeah, this is, gives you, it's about 250 microamps. So this matches with my um, more expensive power meter. That's what it said. So it's, it's accurate, um, which is good to see. I mean, I'm sure they did a, a good job with this software. One thing to watch out for, because this confused me when I first used it, is notice that the, the bottom of the Y graph is not zero. It's 230 microamps. So it like zooms in. So I was like, oh my God, the power supply is so noisy. It's like, no, it's actually not very noisy. That's only like 20 microamps um, of like scatter, you know, like just variation. But that's because it, zero is, you know, it's like it's showing you the, the differential in the current. It doesn't show you the absolute value, which is, which is fine. Just be aware that when you look at the graph um, uh, so you don't get confused. Because I was like, why is this so noisy? It's not. Um, so this is the Power Profiler kit. Uh, it's got this really cool, um, like, edge-lit cutout, which is kind of like a nifty design feature. Um, you've got uh, two USB ports. One is power only, and this is if you ha want to have, like, a separate, like, you know, two-amp power supply or one-amp power supply that's separate than the thing that's supplying USB data power. That's because a lot of times... Um, you know, you can get off, you know, like the power wall adapters will give you like five volts um, or 5.5 volts, 5.25, whereas your computer might be dipping. It might be 4.7 or it might be noisy. You just want to like get the power from a separate uh, supply. Uh, there's an on off. I love the silk screen as documentation. And then, um, you know, what I did is I just uh, took these two pins, which are the ground and power output. And then I just, um, I literally just like plugged in a JST cable, like so, and then um, plugged a feather into it. And that's how I did my um, power measurements. So I just like, you know, once, um, and then I unplugged USB so that the USB wasn't, so it's only powered through the JST. This mimics a battery. And then you can, of course, do your low power measurements. And what's really nice is it's under like 90 bucks. Um, it's a really good deal. Again, usually these kinds of tools are hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it's always been really tough for me to to people like how do I know how much power my project is using it and I'd say honestly for the budget you have connect a battery and just see how long it lasts and then just divide the number of hours from the battery and that gives you the approximate power usage because it's just too difficult for wireless projects like if you look um, back at the the graph you know, it's too, you can't measure that with a multimeter. It's like too spiky and confusing. Um, but with this tool, you can now do it. So that's why I recommend this. If you don't have a power meter, um, they're really handy. It, you know, it's, it's a different tool than a multimeter and oscilloscope. So I do recommend getting one. Um, you, will, you will find it very handy, believe me. Um, I use these all the time, especially in ammeter mode. That's really nice. Um, like for example, we have Raspberry Pi projects. I want to see how much current is being used with like the hat on top of it. I can now use this yeah. as a nice, precise way of measuring the current. All right, we're going to show you where to get it on DigiKey, and we have a two-minute video. So you can get on DigiKey, of course, because this is an MPI. Yes. These are where you get new products. 
Ninja Key. Yes. And it is part number 1490 NRF PPK2 ND, or the short URL is digikey.com forward slash short CV99QH. Yes, perfect for any low power monitoring. This is this is going to be excellent. Bluetooth, Wi Fi, LoRa, cellular. This is the yeah. tool to use. And here is a quick video of Nordic talking about it. already have the Power Profiler app installed, you can install it from the App section. When installed, click Open. From here, we'll be able to control and read data from the PPK2, but before we can measure anything, we need to connect the PPK2 to our device under test, or DUT. The PPK2 supports current measurements from 200 nanoamp to one ampere, with dynamic range switching over the whole range to give you the best resolution possible. This enables support for our short range NRF 52 and NRF 53 series, as well as our cellular IoT NRF 91 series. For this example, I have chosen an NRF 9160DK as the DUT, running our default asset tracker firmware. The PPK2 can act as the power supply or as an ampere meter. Here I want to use the PPK2 as an ampere meter, letting the DK be powered from its USB. I have connected the PPK2 ground to a ground point of the NRF9160 DK, the V in of the PPK2 to the bottom pin of the NRF current measurement header, and the top pin to the V-out of the PPK2. With these connections, we see that the current flow will go from the USB through the PPK2's measurement circuit and back out to the NRF9160 SIP. Refer to your kit's user guide if you want more details on how to connect your development kit. Now, we'll connect the PPK to... And that is this week's Iron MPI. Hi. 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 Hi.